All right, with that, let's bring in Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner. He's an IDF spokesperson, and he joins us now. Uh, Peter, we are seeing new video of an Israeli strike that killed a senior Hamas official. Let's talk about numbers here. How many members of Hamas and top Hamas officials have the IDF killed so far? Hey, Carly, good morning uh, or good evening to you. Here we are continuing our operation is now tw day 21 and we are hunting the leaders those the perpetrators the planners and the the operators themselves and indeed we just took out or announced that, that we had uh, killed uh, Madhat Mubasher who is the head of a battalion in central Gaza and you know this is the price they are going to pay they decided to launch a war on Israel we are going to seek them out and take them out um, the numbers keep coming in we are tens of of terrorists uh, of Hamas leaders, um, we are going to continue to strike them and make sure they can never, ever can commit such atrocities against our people again. Lieutenant Colonel, <laughs> do, does the IDF have a hard number of senior members of Hamas that need to die in order for Israel to say, mission accomplished, Hamas has been eradicated? No, so it's not just a number of leaders, Carly. We're talking about the need to dismantle and destroy the system. Hamas has, has turned or utilized the powers of government to create this terrorist army, to create a terrorist government that has subordinated all of the powers of government for atrocities and the massacre of our people. So it's dismantling the entire system that they have established. It's not a number of people that need to be taken out. Right. It's the system that needs to be taken out. They are just the, they are the operators. They are the planners. Uh, they are the masterminds of the massacre from Yechia Sinwar, the, the prime minister of Hamas himself, all the way down to the last operator. They all need to go. This is uh, veering into diplomatic territory a bit, but Hamas, if you can believe anything that Hamas says, does say that they are willing to release a large number of hostages, 200 hostages, in exchange for uh, fuel and for Israel to reduce airstrikes. What does Israel do in that scenario? So, uh, obviously, we don't take anything um, yeah. that Hamas says it's not worth, uh, you know, even the time we're giving them here to comment on, the, on them. But we are putting the, the issue of the hostages as the top priority of the Defence Force and, of course, the, the, um, the, the diplomatic efforts. There's a lot going on. I'd rather not delve into the details, but, indeed, it is the top of our priorities. They need to come home. They need to be set free now. Um, Hamas are responsible for their well-being. We've demanded that the International Committee of the Red Cross have access to them. But indeed, that is uh, the most important thing. You know, it's 229 is the latest yeah. figure. It's going up. Uh, and that could still go up even further. And, you know, imagine the families of 229 people that for the last three weeks now have been torn to pieces. Without question. And as you were talking, I was thinking, it, it is interesting, modern warfare comes with TV appearances for you, where you get asked these really difficult questions about hostages, and it's more than just a number. These are people's lives, and w questions about when the ground invasion will begin. Um, I, I'm sure that when you talk to some reporters and news anchors, you can also sense an agenda. Uh, what is that part of this job like for you? Uh, so this is, you know, this is, I'm be called in as a reservist. My role here is a temporary one, but, you know, I have a, this huge sense of calling because of, you know, there is justice that needs to be served for the victims of, of this atrocity and the understanding that Israel and Israeli society feel that the reality needs to change with regard to the relationship between Israel and Gaza uh, and that the, the reality cannot remain one where we are constantly constantly under a threat um so i you know i uh, i take re respectfully all journalists questions and, and appeals and of course uh, some journalists come with a very clear agenda uh, sometimes extremely hostile or or just blatantly don't understand the concept of self-defense or definitely not the concept of war and the ramifications of war and i have to remind them that it's not a war that israel chose it's a war that launched by Hamas on our people um, against, you know, you know the, the soft underbelly of society, the civilians, the farmers, the families, the young men and, and, and women who are out in a music festival, the babies who are uh, picked up from their cots and, 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 and beds, uh, and, and those that have been abducted. So you know, there is a, a role there of informing uh, the ill-informed or under-informed or the people that have an agenda. And I think 
um, you know, we right. are getting uh, uh, access to everybody. If people are interested, and, and we're making sure our message is heard, uh, we can only hope uh, that the people not only will hear it, but also will accept what we are saying. Well, you certainly are. And we just got the full morning briefing from IDF spokesperson, your colleague, Daniel Hagari. And he said in the uh, coming hours, we're going to reveal evidence that shows Hamas's use of humanitarian facilities for terrorist infrastructure in a way that endangers citizens of Gaza. What can you tell us about that? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Indeed, you know, it's not a new thing that we're seeing Hamas hiding behind its civilians. I've talked about it frequently here on Fox about how Hamas has positioned, for instance, um, explosive drones on the rooftops of houses and then making those houses obviously a military target. And I did see as we came into the report um, the uh, uh, comparison of before and after up till now. But it's important to notice the strikes are being taken place against specific military targets. And indeed, it just goes to show exactly how deep, how in-depth Hamas has in embedded its uh, uh, infrastructure, its terrorist infrastructure, in within Palestinian society, basically putting all of Gaza at risk. So we are trying to take out those assets, making sure we differentiate between the civilians, the non-combatants, and Hamas and its infrastructure. And it is a very, very challenging task. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, thank you so much for joining us.